Colorado is tied in with the history of mining in the Centennial State. People came from all over the world to get jobs in mining communities across Colorado. Some of the infrastructure that is over a century old can still be found in a lot of places. We went to a little community right outside of Trinidad to learn more about some old smelting ovens still standing today. It's a secluded area that allows people to, to enjoy the quiet, decorated by remnants of the mining industry that once occurred here over 100 years ago. You see the coke ovens here that look like Roman aqueducts and they have a rich story. That story would often be lost if it wasn't for the preservation efforts of people who thought that that mining mattered in the first place. People like Mr. Dave Harris over here. How already? Showtime, folks. Who spends his time uh, volunteering in this community. This gentleman over here is a, a new friend, and his name is Don. I'm Don Unger. I'm the membership development coordinator at the Western Museum of Mining and Industry. You're in the town of Cokedale. And Cokedale started off in 1899. And the American Smelting and Refining Company owned the Cokedale town proper site. Cokedale in Los Animas County contained the largest deposits of bituminous coal, metallurgical coal, west of the Mississippi, so it, it was very important. Well, I think as the name of the town belies, the coking of coal was at the center of the economy here in Cokedale. The process of coke taking that metallurgical coal and getting rid of the impurities that are inside of it. Well, these are called beehive ovens, and there were different types of ovens, but these they found to be the most efficient for making coke. They'd be loaded from the top with either six to eight tons of coal. They'd be sealed up in the front and on the roof, and a fire would be started in the room below that oven. And then people called cokers reach in there and drag that hot coal out, rake it into railroad cars, gondolas, and then those gondolas would then go to El Paso, Texas to make steel. And to smelt down different metals that were used in industrial processes as well as in defense processes for the U.S. military. And the miners were paid 58 cents per ton for their loads of coal. Very tough, very tough. There were actually 25 fatalities here just in Cokedale. Uh, times were hard and they needed work. The way they had it, this was going to be the ideal coal camp of the 20th century. And at the height of production in this town, there were 1,500 people here, miners that were working, and that includes their families as well. Instead of being a tent colony, what they did is they began actually building structures. They built a school. They had six teachers. It went from kindergarten to eighth grade. Baseball was a big thing for coal camps. You worked six days a week, and Sunday was your day off, but that's that's when you were on the diamond, that's when you played ball. They had uh, Carbon Hall, which is their dance hall, and liquor store, and party store. People had a great time here, even though they were working for pennies. But if you talk to old timers, they say it was the greatest time of their life. It's one of the few coal camps that's still pretty much intact. Most of the other camps, you'd never know they were there. They're gone. These are still around, and the only reason is is because it became a historic district. People stayed here, and they, they didn't let them be destroyed. The clock of history doesn't stop when the extraction stops. In fact, the history of the land and the people have continued here in Cokedale, and this is one fine example of why it is that we need to pay attention to the whole history of mining here in Colorado. Coking was a common practice in Colorado mining a century ago. While Cokedale may have the largest collection of ovens still standing, there were some cities that had hundreds more. So keep an eye open for these cool pieces of our state's history as you adventure around Colorado. We'll be right back.